this video explains the structure of the function e to the z, where z is a complex number. This is one of those fundamental functions that you see in lots of places. It has some rather interesting and intricate behavior. So the best way to think about e to the z is making use of real and imaginary parts. So x and y are both real. If you do that, exponent rules allow you to split it up into a product of two exponential functions. And e to the i y by Euler's identity is easily rewritten. And the thing to realize here is that this is this e to the x is a dilation. And this is a rotation. By y radians. So e to the z is a is a dilation and a rotation. Now just to recall what e to the x does. e to the x is an exponential function. That's 1. This is e to the x. A rotation by y radians, of course, will take your point and spin it around. In particular, it's a rotation by y radians in the counterclockwise direction. So taking these two pieces together, we can really understand what this function does. The thing to notice is that this is periodic. In y, both of these guys here are both of these are periodic functions. Periodic with period two pi. Okay. Now putting those pieces together, we can kind of see what's going to happen. We're draw two pictures of the complex plane, one for z, the input, and one for w, the output. Okay, now, as far as the rotation is concerned is periodic with period 2 pi in the y direction. So that means is I can take any strip of width 2 pi, for instance, this one, or any other one I like, and just duplicate it. So I only need to really pay attention to what happens in this strip and then realize that it gets duplicated. Now, within that strip, I've got the real axis. The real axis in z well, that works just like the e to the x function right there. So that e to the x function is strictly positive. So that gets mapped in the w space to over here. Strictly positive. And the thing to realize is that as you go off to minus infinity, that kind of gets down into this vicinity. And if you go to plus infinity, that's over here. There's a special point on here. e to the 0, there's the 0. e to the 0 gets mapped to 1. Now, because this diagram will get a bit cluttered, I'm going to erase the arrows so that I can have some more room. OK. Now, there are some other lines around here. What about, what about the imaginary axis? Where does that go? Well, here's the imaginary axis. I'm only going to look at the portion between minus i pi to plus i pi. Where does that get mapped? Well, that all of those have zero real part. If we look at it, the zero real part means that there's 
a unit dilation, i.e. not scaling at all, and it's just a rotation. So we start out with this point right here, which is e to the 0. You already know where that lives. That's at 1. And we start rotating. And we start rotating, and we get around to a full rotation of 2 pi. So the imaginary axis gets mapped onto the unit circle. So imaginary axis gets mapped to the unit circle. Of course, clearing that out of the way. So, first fact is the real axis maps to positive reals. The imaginary axis Maps to unit circle. Now, everyone in the positive half plane, positive real half plane, i.e., the right half plane, where do they go? Well, all of them have real parts that are bigger than zero, so our dilation will be positive and will be greater than 1, so we'll expand. So all of that gets mapped out here. On the other hand, everyone that's on the left half plane, out here, all of that all gets jammed into inside the unit circle kind of gets mashed into there as well. I'm trying to set that to be cyan. There we go. Say right half plane maps outside unit circle and left half plane maps inside unit circle. And of course, what happens is this strip gets mapped onto the entire complex plane there, with the exception no one ever hits zero. Now, this gets duplicated, one for each of these strips, so this you'll see many, many copies of this. This is a little bit hard to visualize, and it's best to kind of think of this with one extra dimension. The extra dimension is kind of fake, but it's good to try to look at it. And so let me show you what that kind of looks like. It kind of looks like a like a ZD noodle. It's a, a bit of a spiral here, but that spiral is kind of what the image looks like. When we're looking down from the top, like so, we get this sort of circular structure. The real axis, positive real axis, is where that color change on the right is. And the origin is right in the middle, and you can kind of see that no one ever hits the origin. If you look at it from the side, you can see that there are many, and of course it continues, many layers as this spirals on many, many copies. The origin is, of course, something of a problem, and that's actually called an essential singularity. It's rather a tricky kind of thing. And in particular, one thing to realize is that if you try to invert e to the z, i.e. compute a logarithm, we're going to have to tell which of these various surfaces we lie on. And you're going to have to make a choice about where to switch from one to the other. That's why this discontinuity ends up being there. It's kind of a fake discontinuity. It's called a branch cut, where you make a choice about which of these various parts of the surface you happen to lie on. Point of the matter is, though, that with that kind of structure, that this e to the z function is it's entire. There's no actual problems on the domain. Although it's not actually, it doesn't ever hit, it doesn't ever hit the origin, so it's not onto.
but it's sort of the prototypical example of a, of a function with an interesting complex graph.